Thanks. Thanks, Kristen. I want to say thanks to uh, Kristen and to David Shaw for uh, giving me this opportunity. Um, I'm here to talk to you about rites of passage. Rites of passage have been practiced by various cultures throughout time. Hindu, Hebrew, Muslim, Buddhist, Native Americans, North and South, and Aborigines have all incorporated rites of passage into their cultures. But what about us today in modern society? For my peers and I, this time of college is seen as somewhat of a modern day rite of passage. We are tested for four years with tests and quizzes and various other academic challenges. And upon graduating, we are giving the diploma, the symbol that we are no longer students, but now young adults. And it is up to us to now figure it out. What is lacking in this rite of passage is deeper meaning, spiritual meaning, and a true confirmation of our strength and our abilities in the world today. This lack of a true rite of passage in our culture often leaves adolescents and young adults yearning for more. Subconsciously, we try to initiate ourselves. And without guidance through our community and through our elders, this process is often reckless, usually involving drug use and abuse, alcohol abuse, illegal activity that sometimes land us, lands us behind bars, or worse, even death. Some specialists have speculated that the initiation process that has been self-guided by young adults has often, excuse me, some specialists have, have speculated that teen and young adult suicide attempts have often resulted in death. As the rite of passage are important for young adults, they are equally important at various stages of our lives. Rites of passage allow for the self that no longer serves us, parts of us that will just hold us back in the future to die and return to the earth. In this dying, this letting go process, a deep healing is offered. And the parts of us that will be vital to us in, this, in the next stage of our life are revealed through the rite of passage process. So what does a modern day rite of passage process look like that offers, that offers deep and true meaning to individuals in this culture? During the middle of March, UCSC celebrated spring break. Most of my peers flocked to tropical locations to enjoy the time off school. For me, I ventured to Death Valley, where I went to the School of Lost Borders, and I met 11 other individuals that came from all over the world. Siberia, Bangladesh, London, Scotland, Vancouver, Berkeley. And there, we prepared. And for the next few days, we, we performed the vision quest, which is walking off to the sacred mountain alone, with just water to drink and thoughts to think. Four days and four nights of solitude in Mother Nature. The rite of passage of the Vision Fast has been happening here on North America, on Turtle Island, for ages. We must pay homage to the Native Americans, the indigenous people that inhabited, loved, and worshipped this land before us. And I'm not saying that we are here to steal their ceremony or to copy their ceremonies. But as a community that is turning towards having a connection with the earth, with a connection with our great mother, we must learn to build a lasting connection with her. It is in the genius loci, the protective spirit of place, that rites of passage are to be performed here in North America. Like all great journeys, the vision quest follows a three-stage process known, as, known by Joseph Campbell to be the monomyth, the story that pervades all mythology. The first stage of the vision fast journey is a separation phase, a severance, where the hero of the journey leaves the people and is sent off alone into the wilderness to endure deep solitude. The second phase is the initiation phase, where the hero walks through the threshold. The term threshold comes from the term threshing hold, which is removal of the chaff from wheat. Chaff is the inedible husk that grows around wheat during its developmental stage. But in order for, chaff, in order for the wheat to be harvested, the chaff must be removed and given back to the earth to serve another purpose. The second phase is the initiation phase. Oh, sorry. Various rites and rituals within this stage, the initiation stage of the journey, occur for the hero, which symbolize a passing from one life stage into another. And often, something about the hero is revealed to the self during this time, a vision. A calling may come to us during this time that becomes impossible not to think deeply about. 
impossible not to feel in our deepest parts of our being. It becomes inseparable to us at this time. Our truest nature is cracked open and shown to the self, the gift of one's life, which is a gift that they are not here to receive, but to give to their community, our community. The third phase, the return phase, is where the hero who has been initiated returns to their people and shares the gift, the story, the purpose. In coming back from the journey, the hero is the most challenged. The story arc plays to the initiation phase, being the height of the story, but no, it is in the return the hero is the most tested. The old ways of being are waiting for the hero. The temptation for the hero to not share their gifts are great, and to return to their old life as they had not just been initiated is easy to do. For the hero, the true mountain is in the valley. It is in, return, it is in returning courageously as one left will the hero thrive. It is through the rite of passage, the vision fast, that one claims a part of themselves that they have always been, but not yet able to become. Our lives, our truest nature, and the ability to give our gifts to our people is our birthright. It is in the shedding of the chaff, in the separation of what is no longer needed from what is vital to our lives, is when we are able to come, become what we always have been, but not yet been able to. It is then we are able to live in totality. But humans, humans are the only species on this planet that can deny their own flowering. Modern society teaches us that financial stability is more important than spiritual fertility. That finding our gift isn't important, but filling a role in the theatrical performance that serves a purpose in the industrial growth model of our society is. Well, I got news for all of you. The stage to that performance is breaking. In this, in this auditorium last quarter, it was John Young, whom is speaking next, that stood in front of a class of 120 students and told them all that they are geniuses, each and every one of them. I cannot agree with him more, but it takes courage to let the seed of genius in you shine forth. We all have that seed buried deep inside of us, yet we are not taught that we have the strength and power to nourish this seed, to cultivate this seed, and to let this seed grow and blossom into a beautiful flower. We are not taught nor enabled to become the geniuses that each and every one of us is. Living our lives as a seed is safe. The seed is protected and, cl and closed off and can survive that way for millennia. To become the flower, we must allow ourselves to be cracked open. We must allow ourselves to become vulnerable and to let the light in. It is through the cracks, our imperfections, that we hold our true beauty, that we are open to the magic of this world. But we have been taught to live as the seed and not to risk being cracked open and not to flower into our own genius, but to live a life that is safe and predictable. Living as a seed has become comfortable in this industrial growth model of our society, but to live as a flower is to be truly alive. This flowering is our birthright and it is being denied to each and every one of us but it is through the rite of passage that we can reclaim this birthright. We can reclaim ourself and our place in this world to bloom and share our true beauty with the great community. To partake in a rite of passage takes courage, it takes grit, but to partake in a vision fast and claim a part of yourself that you've always been but not yet able to become is not only your birthright, but it is also your responsibility. To crack open the seed of genius and allow your most beautiful self to bloom is needed now more than ever as we are slowly killing this planet which sustains us. Each and every one of us represents the hero's journey as the hero has a thousand faces and hails from a thousand places. I am dreaming of a society where we are not actors, but we are dancers, where wilderness rites of passage hold a commonplace in our culture. We are safer in any wilderness area right here in our upper campus than we are crossing any street in any city in, this, in, in, in the world. It is in nature that we are capable of being the most connected to ourself. It is in nature that our inner voice becomes audible. It is in nature that the most transcendent experiences have happened to humans. It is in nature that we are exposed to parts of our own human nature that holds the key to our lives 
The parts of us that make us feel the most alive are waiting for each and every one of us to go out there and to claim them. And in these parts, wait our gift. All of our seeds are waiting to be cracked open. Do you feel that you're ready to answer this call to adventure? This talk is an invitation to ask yourselves, am I a character on the stage of the industrial growth model? Am I trying my best to remember the lines that have been assigned to my character? Or am I a, am I a flower in the garden of life, contributing get my gifts to the surrounding plants around me? The earth and your people are waiting for you to answer the call to adventure. In the words of Thomas Merton, we do not go into the desert to escape people. We, we go into the desert to learn how to find them. We do not leave them in order to have nothing more to do with them, but to find the way to do them the most good. It is through the rite of passage process of the vision fast we can heal our connection with this earth, heal the connection with ourselves, and to learn to live with the earth and not from the earth. It is through each and every one of us performing a rite of passage that the earth can too share her gifts with her people. The big question here is whether you are able to say yes to your adventure. Thank you.